Hello there and welcome to this iOS 7 programming tutorial. Today I'm gonna cover some basics of Objective-C programming. If you already have some programming experience and you are very comfortable with data types and flow control, this is going to be just yes, some review. However, if this is all new for you, I recommend taking some notes and bear with me because we have to go through this in order to make our super amazing apps. So why don't we go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and open Xcode. New project. And this time we're just gonna create an empty application. We're not gonna be making any kind of real app. We're just gonna cover some basic topics. Next. You should be familiar with all of this already, so let's go ahead, let's save it. And for this time, we're going to be working in the main file. We don't really need this code because we're not using objects. I'll cover what objects are in a couple tutorials, so just delete this. And let's get started. One of the most important parts of any program is data. Objective-C defines a set of data types so we can work with data in a more understandable way. Objective-C has many types of data, so we're going to take a look at the most common ones. These include integers, characters, doubles, floats and booleans. So don't worry, I'm gonna cover all of them. For us to use data, we need to first store it in a variable. You create variables as follow. All right, let's take a look at this. This part here is the data type. Here we're indicating that this variable is an integer. This is the variable name. You can name anything you want. You could name it cheesecake, as long as it starts with a character. This right here is called the assignment operator, and it's gonna set an integer value in this case to our variable. And this 10 is the value that our variable is gonna have. Now, Integers and characters are exactly what their name says. Character. However, booleans, floats, and doubles are a little more complicated. Uh, floats and doubles are just numbers, but they have a decimal place in it. The only difference is that Floats have up to seven decimal places, while doubles have twice as many. That's why they are called double. Let's do an example. Well, my double. Now, booleans. Booleans are used to store the result of an expression in the form of either true or false. We create them as follows. And let's name it my boolean. Let's not get very original here. And say it to false. There we go. Now, alongside with data types, we can find data type qualifiers. This allows us to specify certain characteristics of special data types. Like, let's say we want to have a huge number. Well, the way we would do this is we would create a long end That's a big number right there. Or another special situation is that we want to keep our variable constant. Let's say we don't want to change its value throughout our program. You do this by just saying const say character
This will ensure that const car is always gonna be the inner program, and if we try to change it, Xcode will give us an error. Now, and we need a way to work with variables, change them, put them together and just do stuff with them. The most common way are expressions, and the, basic, the most basic way is through operators. Some of the most common operators are times, division, addition, subtraction, and module. Let's give a look to all of them. For example, let's create an integer variable in my result. Notice how we are not assigning any value to it yet. We're gonna say my result equals number times 2. What is this going to do? Well, this is gonna set my result equal to number which is 10 times 2. So my result will equal 20. Let's give a look to the module operator since it's not as obvious. My result equals number module 4. What this is doing is gonna perform a division on number and it's gonna store the remainder in my result. In this case, the remainder of 10 divided by 4 is gonna be equal to 2, so my result will equal 2. We can also combine these operators with an assignment operator like this one to make our life a little more easy. Let's say number plus equals 5. What this is going to do is going to set number equal to its actual value right now plus 5. This is exactly the same as doing number equals number plus 5. It's just a little more convenient. And if we even want to get more specific, we have the increment and decrement operators. They're declared as follows number plus plus and number minus minus would be the decrement one. What this do is that they increment the value of number by one. So this will be number, which is 10 plus 5, 15 plus 1, will be 16. Minus minus, it's the same as saying number equals number minus 1, so I would set it back to 15 again. Now, there's a specific kind of operators called the comparison operators. What do they do? Well, they compare variables. They are the equals operator, less than, greater than, less than or equals, greater than or equals, and finally, not equal. Notice this syntax here. The way they work is that they compare a variable and return a boolean type depending on whether the expression is true or false. Let's see an example first. My boolean equals number greater than or equals to 25. What is this going to do? It's going to check if number is greater than or equals to 25. It is not. So it's going to evaluate to false. So my boolean is going to be false. Same for less than, greater than, they all work the same with the same logic. We can combine multiple comparison operators together in the same line by using the OR and AND operators. They are specified as follows. This is OR and this is AND. So let's see an example. Number 
greater than or equal to 25 or number equal to 15 let's go through the logic here number is greater than or equal to 25 well we already know that's false because it's 15 or number is equal to 15 we know that's true so my boolean is going to be true this time same way for the AND operator both conditions here will have to be true now programming consists mainly in creating code that makes decisions based on certain conditions these decisions are going to determine how a program works in the different situations this is called flow control now the, ba the most basic form of flow control is the if statement let's do an example first and then we'll explain it if well actually int x equals 42 the meaning of life if x is greater than 30 do something how is this going to work? well First we create this integer variable, we initialize its value to 42 because it's the answer to everything and then if x is greater than 30 now we know this is going to evaluate to either true or false we know it's true because 42 is greater than 30 so since it's true it's gonna, the compiler is going to go ahead and execute the code in here whatever we have in here will get executed. If on the other hand we check if it's less than well 42 is not less than 30 so whatever is in here will not get executed. In some conditions we would want to execute the code we would want to execute a piece of code in case that the if statement is false like in here. In order to do that we're going to use an else statement and it's written this way else do something else how our prompt would work is that it will check if x is less than 30 it's not so it's going to go to else and it's going to do whatever is in here now another very interesting form of flow control are loops. Loops are great because they allow us to perform certain operations multiple times without having to write much code. Let's take a look at a for loop first. A for loop will execute a certain number of times until a condition is met. <coughs> you write them as follows for int i equals zero i is less than 5 i plus plus now notice the these brackets here what they do is they delimit a set of code that will run in the loop statement for the if it works the same way so whatever is in here is what will be run do something. Let's go over the, the syntax here. This here is called the initializer. It's created an integer variable named i and it's saying it equal to zero. Now it's second if i is less than five. Well it's zero, so yes. And then what it does is that it increments i by one. So the way this is going to work. I zero, I is less than five, that's true. It's gonna set I to one and it's gonna run over through the code that is in here. Now once the code here is finished, it will go back to the for loop. I is now one, but it's still less than five. Once again, I is two. And it will go until i equals 5, which is not less than 5. 
so the for loop is done and you will continue executing the program. Now, in some situations you might want to end a for loop early before meeting this condition and you do that by using a break statement. Let's say that we want to break this loop whenever i is equal to 3 instead of 5. Well, you do that by just use a if statement if, x, if i is equal to 3 break. So the moment i is equal to 3 this loop right here will stop executing and go here without running through 4. <clears throat> Another type of loop are while loops and do while loops. What a while loop is, is kind of a for loop, but it's gonna keep executing it's the code inside it until a certain condition is false. You write them like this while notice condition and statement x is less than I don't know. X is greater than zero. Execute this. The way this is going to work, as long as X is greater than zero, it's going to keep going and going until X is less than or equal to zero. Another version of a while loop is the to while loop. It's basically the same. The only difference is that a do while loop is gonna perform the code inside the loop first, and then it's going to check if it's if the condition is met. This is useful if we know that the code is gonna be executed at least once. And it's very simple. You just say do bracket do something here and then you say wow x is less than greater than 39 and that's it that's how you declare a do loop notice how in contrast to for loops these loops are not set to end after executing a certain number of times. So we have to figure out a way to end them. Otherwise, they will run to infinity, and that's bad, our program will crash. No one wants that. If you come from Java, that's usually a stack overflow. Now, I'm gonna post this code online with some more information on all the, all the different types of variables that you have and loops so you can style them on your own. So keep playing with them, have fun, and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.